this is a this is a mystery. This is nothing as everything. This is the formless form. This is the empty fullness. Already it is that. It's energy that is and is not. And that energy, which is everything, simply has no it's simply wild and free. It has nothing that influences it. There's nothing, there's no God or consciousness or anything directing it. It has no direction. It has no intention. It has no meaning. It has no purpose. It just is this. It just is everything. And it's completely free. And it's mad and wild. It can be traveling faster than light and at the same time it can be zero. So it's a magician, it's like a magician, it can be anything and it is everything. Everything you're looking at, everything you feel, think and hear or whatever is simply energy with no identity. It's just energy happening in all those forms, in all the forms, the galaxies, the stars, the apparent world, the room, apparent people, apparent chairs. That's all there is. And because the, the energy is free, it can also be limited. If it, if it couldn't be limited, it wouldn't be free. So it also appears as boundless energy and also appears as limited energy. And the limited energy can enter the human physiology at a very early age, and there's a sudden sense in the body of there being something, which very quickly turns into someone. So that energy contracted in the body gives the feeling of something here. It's just what arises is self-awareness. There's a sudden awareness of a center in here, something in here. Self-awareness, self-consciousness arises. And as the child grows, the tiny child grows and meets lots of other people, then the idea of there being an individual in here, me, the self, the I, grows and becomes more and more certain. I am a person. That's what happens. I'm a person. There's another person there and another person over there. There's lots of persons. And what also becomes seemingly real to me, I'm real, is my story, I'm real. I was born, I will live, and I will die. That's real. It's a story in time. Lots of things can happen in it, and they happen to me. I experience everything that's happening. It comes to me as an experience. I'm aware of everything that's happening. And also uh, what arises as the child grows is the idea, again, a real idea for the child, that it, uh, for the young man or a young woman, is that it has free will and choice, and that it can influence this story that's happening to it. I live in a real story, it's my story, and I can make my story better or worse or whatever. So that's what, how this Got this energy, this contracted, apparently a contracted energy takes form and how it seems to grow and respond and react to the to life that seems to be happening outside. But of course, the other thing that's arising is a sense of being separate. So the individual feels as though it is experiencing everything that happens as something that's happening to it. So it's somehow the sky and the trees and other people are over there. They're separate, uh, they're separate energies happening to this. So what arises really is a dualistic reality. But it's actually me that's dual. Me is dualism. Me is separation. Me is the feeling of being an experience in the years. And me lives in a dual reality. Can't live outside. That's how it goes. That, that's, how, that's how it exists through its sense of duality. And that can become very dissatisfying. There can be a feeling of something missing. I, I'm a part. 
I'm like, it's out there happening, but I'm a part, but I'm here and it's happening to me. There's something about that that's not satisfying. For most people, they live with it and sing, don't sort of question it much, just like that. Some people, there's a more of an openness to the possibility that something is missing. I've lost something. Something's not there anymore. I'm going to find it. And so, in a sense, seeking, seeking an inner seeking arises. And the seeker may look for the answer to fulfillment, to try and find fulfillment, and not be dissatisfied anymore, might turn to religion or, or therapy or the idea of becoming enlightened or something that would, would somehow change the experience of being separate. And so the seeker is very attracted to change anyway. The seeker feels they're not good enough. There's a sense of loss. Someone wants to learn how to become better. And they will find a million teachers out there. <laughs> a million priests and probably two million teachers of enlightenment and, and lots of other therapists who will try to help them to change. So the idea is, in, in very simple terms, the idea is you're not good enough like you are. You are this, this, well, you aren't quite right. You need to be more still, more loving, more open, more of something or the other. There's always a list of things that you need to bring into your life to bring to find fulfillment. And that's very, very powerful for the individual seeker because in a sense it feels, although it would recognize it, it senses that it's lost something very beautiful, some sort of paradise to you, or something else has been lost. I've been cast out, so I'm not good enough. So any teaching is incredibly attractive to the season. I can learn how to be good enough. And so this whole contracted energy is creating this amazing reality. I am real. I live in a story. I have to make my story work. I have to make enlightenment work for me in order to be fulfilled. So that whole construct that we all are familiar with and know and have experienced is coming out of a sense of, of an energy that's contracted which gives the sense of self-awareness. And the other thing that's very powerful in that, in that growing up is awareness. Awareness is the thing, consciousness awareness is the energy that keeps the me locked in to the separate reality. Through awareness, me is there. I'm aware of my life. I'm aware of sitting on the seat. I am aware of sitting on the seat. So I'm real, and sitting on my awareness of sitting on the seat is real. So the individual lives in what it feels is a real world. So what we're sharing to, together here is the possibility, the suggestion, which has been made here, that the whole construct of the me, the individual, and the whole uh, experience that it has is uh, illusory. It's a dream. It's like there's a dreamer that grows up and dreams it's separate. And so we're, we're, we're going to share that together and talk about the way the me seems to take form and also talk about the way in which the me tries to find fulfillment. And what also may arise is the sudden realisation that the whole attempt to find fulfillment is wonderfully, beautifully, utterly futile in every way. Because the, the me can only exist and experience a dual world. So its attempt to find something that is non-dual or infinite is utterly impossible because it can't comprehend that. So what comes out of this conversation is, this, is the sudden possibility that there's something else beyond or something else that is not about self seeking, process, energy, belief, all those things that are connected with seeking. There's something else. And, and that, well, that can emerge in, in this sort of sharing. So words, we're talking together, are, have an energy. And, you know, words have an energy. They're not just words. They have an energy. So talking together, that something 
uh, that's held in, in by the me, the beliefs that I am real, the beliefs that I can find what I'm looking for. They can, in, in just talking about it in another, from a totally different perspective, they can unravel those, uh, those ideas, those fixed ideas about me being real, can unravel. But there's something else here, something that can't be seen. What's being communicated here has no sort of agenda. It's not a teaching. So there's nothing here in this room about the individual learning to be better. There's nothing in here that, that in this meeting that makes any demands on the individual. And even further than that, what's going on here is that there, there's no recognition that the individual is anything other than a dreamer. So energetically, this is, there is no connection between this and any kind of teaching because it has a totally free, liberating energy which, which is pointing or, in a way, illuminating something else that's beyond the individual. So the whole sense that you, know, you have to be something or learn something simply unravels and that energetic sense which has no intention or direction is so open and boundless that that sense of contraction can possibly simply let go into that. And then <laughs> it's possible also that suddenly this individual, this contracted entity, will fall away. But the only thing about that is that there's nobody that will know that's happened. Because what we're talking about here, as I said at the beginning, is a mystery. What we're talking about here is the possibility of the seeker falling away and all that's left is unknowable. It can't be described. 